Good morning, everyone. I'm Jen Houston, owner of the Art Two Fartsy Gallery. I'm a full-time independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Canmore, Alberta, Canada. Welcome to our last day playing around with all these poppy sets that Stampin' Up! has to offer. I have had lots of fun trying out a fun fold. We did that on Wednesday. Thursday, we did a neat little technique with raising up the little poppies. And today, I haven't played with this technique in quite a long time, so um, playing around with it this morning has been lots of fun. I changed up a few things, you know, from how I would or normally, I guess, do it, and uh, I'm loving the results. So I hope you have lots of fun today. Um, hopefully, you get back to this new link. Hello, Donna. Donna's back. Awesome. We had a little tr technical troubles. There was a lot of freezing, so I decided to uh, stop and start again. <laughs> so I'm glad to see Donna's back. And just like Donna, make sure you comment and uh, anything you like that you, uh, if you could give some hearts to things you love that you see. And of course, share this video with all of your friends. That uh, helps my little Stampin' Up! Oh, it's still freezing? Darn. I don't know, we'll have to check into our new internet here. Because I can't have that freezing, can I? It's a pain when it's freezing. All right, well, we'll continue on and hopefully um, things settle down. That's my hope. All right, so let me show you the stamp set that we are using today. It is Painted Poppies. And uh, for my first card that I was playing around with this morning, I used this nice stamp. And the one we're gonna use today is this one. So um, lots of beautiful images for sure. Even down to these fun little speckles, because that of course adds a little pizzazz and things too. Um, you know, poppies aren't always perfect, right? They have little dings and little um, imperfections, if you will. You're, I'm still freezing. Oh. I'm sorry, everybody. I don't know. I put it on lower quality, hoping that um, I would be all right. Hmm. If nothing else, this is going on YouTube. So I'll be on the YouTube. Ch this video will go on to the YouTube channel later on today um, or onto my um, blog all the dimensions and all the card recipes and products that I use and all this kind of thing will be on my blog later on today. All right, so let's just, on we go. <laughs> Sorry about that everybody, I don't, I'm not sure what I can do to fix that right at the moment. All right, so here is the card I made this morning. Okay, I don't wanna blind you. What do you think? Isn't it neat? I don't know if you can see the bumps. Yeah, yeah, there you go, there's some bumps. Hello everybody, thanks for popping on. You're up early this morning. Some of you, I bet Wanda is probably, what are you, two hours different? It might be lunchtime where you are. It's 10 o'clock where I am. So isn't that cool? It is called the Black Ice Technique. And I tell you, as soon as I saw this poppy set, it, I thought of this right off the hop that I wanted to do. And frankly, I haven't done it yet, <laughs> surprisingly enough. Too much to play with, no, so little time. But today I got to do it and I'm so excited. So normally, I have only used um, silver copper foil. So today I decided, okay, let's go with gold. Why not, right? Um, we have so many other options now. We have the copper foil, the silver, gold. Um, I don't know if we still have champagne or not. Somebody will have to help me out there with that one. But so many neat options. So for this technique, you're gonna need some stays on ink. Stays on is a permanent ink. It is um, going to stick. <laughs> <laughs> for lack of a better term. So if you were to put, say, memento or normal ink onto the copper foil, it's not gonna dry. So that is where stays on, comes in handy. 
It's going to give you a nice crisp image. It smells like almonds. <laughs> It's a really nice smell, and uh, it, like I say, you can cut color with your Stampin' Blends and it's not gonna rub off. Um, you can even use stays on on things like glass or vases or um, candles. I don't know if you've ever done the candle technique. It's blurry now. <laughs> Probably because it's lower quality. Oh. Can't win, I can't win. All right, well, on we go. So that was the first card we're gonna do. And this card, I thought, okay, well, I've been playing around with, oh, let's show, let's tell you the colors I used. Mossy Meadow for the background, basic black for this layer. I used very vanilla, just that thin little layer of very vanilla, gold, copper foil, and uh, there's this little, punched out piece here um, with the classic label punch that's in very vanilla and of course the sentiment is in basic black but I decided to use the gold embossing powder okay um, the poppies on here are cherry cobbler so the uh, dark and the light versions just to kind of give some variation in the poppies there we go okay now onto this one, I decided to use basic gray. Instead of going straight to the black, why not kind of soften it a little bit by just doing basic gray. I have um, a layer here of the same basic gray, but I ran it through the tin tile embossing folder. Oh, it's always big decisions. Which side? <laughs> do you want the side raised or do you want the side you know, that's inverted. They're both so beautiful, decisions, decisions. I don't know. Um, I'm also going to have a layer of Whisper White. And then we're gonna go back to the good old faithful here of Silver Foil. All right. Okay, so let's start stamping here. First up, I have this stamp. Ooh, let's get rid of that for a minute. Still figuring out my new lights here. So there we go, that stamp. And we're gonna use that stays on ink, like I said, because otherwise it's not gonna stick to the foil. And you will be waiting and waiting and waiting for it to dry. I'll never forget, I was using um, regular ink on vellum when I was doing my baby book. And I thought, oh my goodness, I let it sit for days and it still would not dry so um yeah it's kind of a toughie all right let's try and get this sort of centered maybe to the top be careful because it can kind of slip because it's slippery right foil is a little bit slippery mm, almond flavoring smell <laughs> anybody else find that with stays on there. All right, let me put that lid back on because it, boop, 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 boop. it is an alcohol-based product. And so um, you just don't want all the alcohol to dry out of there. Isn't that cute? Oh, it's hard to see. I'm sorry. All right, this time I'm gonna color in with real red. I thought I would kind of change up the red colors. I'm gonna go in with the darkest color first how that just colors on there so nicely. I will say that if you go over top of it with another color, like if you can't color like you normally do with the blends because once you start coloring over top of what you've already colored, it kind of takes it off. So, so just as an aside, kind of decide what color you want where, and go with it because we can't go over top. Mm, let's go with, let's color this part again. The same color. Um, let's color this in with the darker one. Okay. And now let's try with our 
lighter real red. So, and I think we're going to just stay right there. That is blurry, isn't it? Because it's, you can't find the, oh, it's so much shine. There we go. Should we color in the leaf? What do you think? Could, or do we want to just, maybe we'll just focus on that poppy. Okay, so let's just kind of give this a little bit of a, you could you could use your heat tool to kind of dry it a little bit. I'm just going to keep going. Okay, we're going to use our stays on ink again. So open this up. Make sure you keep this little lid part. It just helps it from drying out. Okay, make sure your hands are clean. Hang on to it. And what we're going to do is we're just going to drag it a little bit to make kind of these little imperfections, if you will. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. But... And, you know, come on to the paper. That's okay. Just makes it look very antique-ish. And then let's go from the sides. Give me some thumbs up if you've tried this technique before. The black ice technique. Did I even say what it was? <laughs> oh boy. So Halloween tomorrow, yikes, is anybody, uh, anyone's kids, did they, are they still doing Halloween or are they kind of uh, foregoing that? Okay, so there we go, see how that just kind of makes kind of a little bit of an antique looking. And let's see, let's make, oh, I didn't get myself. A little piece of basic black. Let me go grab that. My little scrap pile. There we go. Now, um, I'm wondering, should we use, what do you think, white, whisper white, for the thank you, or should we use silver? I was gonna use silver, and then I thought, well, maybe that's already enough silver. Maybe we should do white so it really stands out nicely. I think we're gonna go with white. Still cutting in and out. Oh, sorry about that. Let's go with, yeah, let's go with white. If we don't like it, there's always the other side of the paper, right? So there's my thank you again. You know, these poppies can be used for rem the Remembrance Day purpose or, it, of course, for any purpose at all, really. They're kind of happy, happy little flowers. They are, um, you know, appropriate for any kind of event. Tap that off. Oh, you know what? I didn't use my embossing buddy. I don't know why. I, we're gonna have to go into that product or um oh what's it called? The sandbox. Demonstrators get to write comments about things and offer suggestions. So I'm gonna have to say, bring back the embossing buddy. I'm just heating this up with a heat tool. I used my Versamark ink. Don't 
burn my fingers too badly. <laughs> All right, let's start fussy cutting this out. You got to get yourself a great pair of paper snips. Makes fussy cutting so much easier. So I'm just kind of bubble cutting. I'm just um, kind of leaving that black bubble around the lettering. Kind of helps to outline it and make it look really nice. Stands out nicely. So are you dressing up for Halloween? Do you, do you go for Halloween or do you um, just sit back and let the kiddos do that? <laughs> Okay, yes, that looks nice. Okay, I'm glad I chose that. I almost want to put a black layer behind this one because I think it needs something to kind of anchor it. And since I have my black scraps right here, let's see what we could do. Mm -hmm. That would have looked nice if it was cut out of a um, stitched nested label die. Ideas, ideas. Always ideas. Well, here's a little, little piece. Okay, my, of course my trimmer's way on the other side of my table. Let's check out what this measurement was. It is, oh boy, uh, two and one eighth. So maybe we will go two and three eighths, just to make it a little bit bigger. And then for width wise, let's see, we are at Four and one quarter, so let's go four and three, or four, four and one eighth, so let's go three and one eighth. No, four and three eighths. Oh. Okay, let's see what, what this kind of looks like all together. Maybe we can even alternate the we could do all sorts of things, right? Okay, before we start assembling everything, what I wanted to do was take that stays on ink, and you know how we kind of swiped it on the foil? We're gonna do the very same thing with our card base. So just kind of rubbing it along the outside, straight down, and then we're gonna go this direction. Like I say, it's okay if it gets, you know, kind of onto that card base. That's all right. Pretty dark on that part. I should have probably squished it down. <laughs> if I had to run my finger along there, it would have, wouldn't have been so intense. But that's okay. We're all good. All good. There. You could even... How do you feel about me running it over top of it? And this, this might look cool. Let's do it. Let's do it. If we don't like it, there's always the other side, right? <laughs> then that forces us to use the other side. Oh yeah, it just kind of helps pop those little um, raised bits, doesn't it? Cute. Just subtle. Neat. You can see the pattern. All right, let's glue this guy down. I am going to use the Stamp and Seal Plus. Oh, or not. I don't know why sometimes I have trouble. It tears my paper. There's got to be a trick to this that I have not discovered yet. Oh, see? 
There's always multi-purpose glue. <laughs> that works great too. Okay, let's just put that on the center. Oh, I love this. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, so nice. Okay, let's mount this onto here. Maybe we'll do that right on. And there again, because this back is a little bit slippery, I'm going to use the Stampin' Seal Plus. Or if you feel more comfortable with the multi-purpose glue that works as well um let's let's see what this what we think here here it is perfectly straight i think it needs a little off centering yeah okay so even if this is in the center let's put that in the center I kind of want to pop this up. Let's use our dimensionals. What about, do we want a ribbon at the bottom? I was looking at ribbons and I, I, I don't know. I wasn't sure. Oh, and I do have this as well. There are these beautiful doilies. Best hint I saw a few years ago. And use of two dimensionals, put two dimensionals on plastic lid of the stays on. So it's, oh yes, so it's stuck. Smart lady. Yes, I'm gonna do that. Do you know what Donna's saying? Here, we'll do it right now so you can all see what she means. So what you can do is see this little plastic piece, put it, put this, put some dimensionals on the lid off the backs. Let's close it and give it a squeeze. And that way it's always stuck there. Thank you Donna for that hint. That's that's awesome. So I do have this doily. I don't know if that's a little too much. Actually it's kind of pretty. Let's go with that. <laughs> instead of ribbon. I think ribbon will complicate things. Let me go back to my snail. Not snail. Stamp and seal. So let's just add a few strips there. Put it kind of to the center. Stick that down. Now let's put dimensionals on this layer. Pop that up a little bit. go to town with those dimensionals and make sure it's nice and stuck. Oh my goodness, I forgot a hole. <laughs> Hang tight. Let me put <laughs> let me put these back on. I forgot the ice part. Oh my goodness. Hang on. <gasps> oh, lady, lady, lady. Let's find a hole back from somewhere. <laughs> Oh my goodness, hopefully this still works. Okay, so we forgot the whole ice part of this piece. <laughs> you take your Versamark and you're gonna ever so slightly just rub, of course now it's bumpy, slide across it. Okay, and then we're going to use clear embossing powder. Man, this is gonna be interesting. Now I only did part of it, as you can see, All right? So the goal is not to get it perfectly everywhere. The goal is to get it kind of hit and miss. So let's heat this up.
Can you see the difference? Isn't that cool? So it just kind of gives this bumpy look to it. Poppy is a flower for the August birthday. I didn't know that. Thanks for sharing that, Minnie. That's cool. Okay, and so then I have a little strip here. So once again, just drag this across. Where it hits is where it hits. And let's get that white and... Oh, that's not the one I wanted. Oh, shoot. I need clear. <laughs> is it Monday? I don't know. Oh, my goodness gracious. We don't want white. Let's just wipe it on my black pants. <laughs> okay, let's start that again. And let's go with the clear embossing powder. This clear stuff is super duper fine. And if it goes over top of the, you know what was already there, it's not a big deal. Okay, here we go. better but I see I've got a great big line through there I think it's because the dimensionals are kind of bumping things up anyways do that before you put dimensionals on and before you glue it down to your your uh, backing okay let's attempt this now now we can take off those little bits Or not. That's weird why that one doesn't want to come off. Well, let's just put another one in his place then. Too bad for you. All right. So now we get to put this down. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Love it. And lastly, let's put our little thank you. I'm going to pop that up. I think it deserves a popping up. Bounce on a bit. Just. And I think I'm going to use just a little end bit. I do have another piece here. Just for that other little piece. Thanks for sharing, Mary Ellen. I appreciate that. All right. There we go. Thank you. You want a neat technique? Neat idea? I think I have to do this a little more. Or that's where the white was and I didn't get it off. <laughs> so we could use some of the metallic pearls, silver, or if you want to hit up with a little more white, we could do, let's go with our plain old pearls, just to kind of give something up here to balance things out. So I've got my take your pick tool. Press press these down. Let's do just two, three little pearls in that corner to help balance things out. I like it. And there we go. Sorry about the glare, but that's a cool feature, right? All right, so there is the card we made today. I think it's absolutely stunning. And of course, this was the card that I made earlier today with the gold foil. So give copper a try and show me what it looks like. And of course, it doesn't have to be this flower. You could, you can, there are, um, you can use like the trees from Rooted in Nature. You could use um, the mountains from Mountain Air. Oh, oh, you can, oh, ideas, ideas. <laughs> You could use the mountains in the background and there is that cutout tree, that beautiful evergreen tree that you could put over top. <gasps> oh, I have ideas. But I wanted to do this because I wanted the chance to give this some color because a lot of them that you, a lot of the black ice techniques that you see 
aren't colored, right? They're just black images. So it's kind of cool how you can color those up. I think they're neat. All right, if you are a veteran, uh, if you are somebody who fought in a war, let message me and I would love to send you one of the cards that I made this week because that's my purpose in uh, creating these cards was for Remembrance Day. Otherwise, um, they are going to be beautiful thank you cards. Yeah, I never thought about coloring on foil, right? Um, I'm sure, you know, like that silver is very, so neutral that you could color all sorts of things on there, I think. I think that would be beautiful. So give this technique a try if you haven't, haven't ever. Um, if you have, maybe it's a reminder, you know, get this, get this technique out again. Um, just a reminder that October or November 1st, pardon me, is the last day to sign up for the Christmas Gleaming card class. I'm starting card class series. And so the first one is going to be the Christmas Gleaming. So basically you pay and I send the whole bucket box to your door with all the supplies plus extra um, paper to make your own cards of course and a free pack some free um copper those copper stars i think they're so stunning and of course you'll get videos on how to make some cards um so that one's coming up um next week i will be posting i can't remember if i have any appointments on monday so i will either be at 10 o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the afternoon I will post which, which will be happening. Um, also, I was gonna say, make sure you check out Sunday. If you've been working on some projects, share them with us. I have sharing Sunday. Please uh, put that, you know, put your projects out there. I love when people comment on each other's projects. It's, it's just a nice way to show off all the amazing talent that you all have. Today is, um, I'm going to be sharing the Chopped winner. I'm so excited. We may have our first Canadian, I'm just gonna say. <laughs> Finally. Um, so I will be announcing that later on today. Plus, I'm gonna have all of the instructions on how to make this card, what all I use, the dimensions, the, the instructions. Um, later on my blog. All right. Otherwise, if I don't see you beforehand, I will talk to you on Monday at some time, some point and um, see your lucky number that you choose for the mail it out Monday challenge. Alrighty, everyone have a safe Halloween and have a great weekend. Bye.